Four cities proposed to the NFL, but were left at the altar. Two of those cities finally found themselves betrothed. The other two are still trying to find love from the league. In this video, we look at four teams who aimed Cupid's bow at the NFL, but ended up heartbroken. The city of Seattle wanted an NFL team decades before the Seahawks became a franchise. In 1972, Minnesota businessman Wayne Field, who had been working for a few years to bring a team to Seattle, attended the groundbreaking of the King Dome with a mock-up helmet of a team called the Seattle Kings. Field recruited NFL Hall of Famer Hugh McElhenney, who had ties to Seattle as a one-time player and head football coach of the Washington Huskies. Field made McElhenney the vice president and general manager of, as this headline points out, a non-existent team. In 1974, the NFL did indeed award a franchise to Seattle, but unfortunately, Fields' fortunes were not enough. But the Nordstrom family of the department stores of the same name had enough capital to capitalize, and the Seahawks were born. In 1991, the NFL was back in the expansion business and ready to award two new franchises. And the three cities that are remaining on this list, they were ready. We'll start with the Memphis Hound Dogs, a proposed team from a group of investors that included former USFL Memphis Showboats owner William Donovan and FedEx chairman Fred Smith. The team would play at the newly renovated Liberty Bowl. The group went with the name Hound Dogs as a tribute to local legend Elvis Presley and his hit song. Elvis Presley Enterprises was also a minority partner in the bid. The Memphis Hound Dogs never happened, but a couple of years later, the Memphis Mad Dogs took the field in the CFL's brief expansion to the United States, thanks to Fred Smith, whose group was, at the time, the richest owners in the expanded CFL. Smith was also instrumental in reviving the Memphis Showboats in the new USFL, now the UFL. St. Louis is the most heartbroken city in all of pro football, even before the Rams left them for greener and sunnier pastures. When the NFL's St. Louis Cardinals moved to Phoenix after the 1987 season, St. Louis had an opportunity to rejoin the NFL with an upcoming expansion. The St. Louis Stallions was a team and ownership group created on paper, but when that group fumbled the ball, the NFL moved on. But the Stallions were not sent to the glue factory just yet. St. Louis native James Orthwine, a member of the Bush family, bought the New England Patriots in 1992 with designs on moving them to St. Louis and calling them the Stallions. Once again, the Stallions never got out of the starting gate, as Foxborough Stadium owner Robert Kraft would not allow the team to break the lease. Kraft initiated a hostile takeover, bought the Patriots, and the rest was history, and history-making. In 1994, St. Louis got their NFL team, as the Rams came from L.A. to St. Louis, won a Super Bowl in 1999, and returned to L.A. Just like St. Louis, Baltimore saw their NFL team leave, quite literally, in the middle of the night. That team relocated to Indianapolis. The ownership group that included Leonard Wineglass, who owned the merry-go-round chain of stores, and Malcolm Glazer, who later bought the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, attempted to field a team called the Baltimore Bombers with this amazingly 1990s logo. The Bombers was in reference to the World War II B-26 Marauders that were built in Baltimore. Well, the blue and the bronze of the Baltimore Bombers never made it to the NFL, but like Memphis, the city parlayed its interest in pro football into attracting the CFL for its brief American experiment, and the Baltimore Stallions even won the Grey Cup in 1995. Oh, what could have been for the NFL in those cities? Can you imagine the kind of merchandise we would have gotten? Maybe a Seattle Kings mini helmet, maybe a St. Louis Stallions jersey, Maybe a Baltimore Bombers jersey and a mini helmet. Maybe a Memphis Hound Dogs mini helmet. Well, you can imagine no more because these non-existent teams do have real merchandise thanks to RoyalRetros.com. Go there to find the apparel and merchandise from teams real and some we only can dream about. RoyalRetros.com. Use the code JLS and get 10% off your entire order. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out these other videos for more football history. If you like what you saw in this video, please like and subscribe.